years? Well, the, the biggest thing that I, I think I've seen over the last few years is a lot of our lakes um, are getting clear. And, you know, you've got to really, you know, match the hatch more so than ever. So, you know, a lot of the new colors that we have this year are built towards that. Um, you know, we've we've enhanced the, the sexy shad line from the original sexy shad color. Now we've got, you know, chrome sexy shad, clear sexy shad, gold sexy shad. Um, because in different clarities of water and different times of the year, the hue and the color of a, of a shad changes. So you want to have something that matches all those. Um, the other thing we've really introduced is some new bluegill and sunfish type patterns. And, you know, during the spring of the year especially, uh, when the bluegills are spawning through that whole post-spawn period when bass are trying to keep them away from their nests. That's a key color. It's a really important color. And then there's a lot of places like where I live in the north where there aren't shad. I mean, they just, you know, farm ponds and things like that. The primary forage is bluegills. So, so we really, you know, just are trying to expand those color lines. Um, not to say that those good basic colors don't catch fish. You know, I mean, a, a chartreuse blackback crankbait and a chartreuse white spinnerbait catch fish everywhere you go. But what I found is that if you can really match the hatch and get, get those color patterns as close to the natural forage as possible, you're going to get more bites. So that's why we have more colors.